Yeah, in, this, in this trial, I think it was about 70 percent were involved something about the bifurcation, but all bifurcations don't uh, rule out stenting. Some of them, uh, has been shown by Park's uh, paper, uh, can one stent can can uh, can address it. So, you know, I I have looked at those data and they are so contradictory and confusing, and they are and they are uh, two years, three years, four years data. Now. We have uh, 40 years history for coronary artery bypass. And uh, uh, my take is that you do a coronary artery bypass on a 55-year-old man, and 90% of them get 15 years yeah. of uh, excellent quality of life and very few cardiac symptoms. They get to age 70, and they get a, a reintervention, okay? And right now, it's a percutaneous reintervention, most likely. And they keep going, all right? You take a 55-year-old man and go down the slippery slope of multiple stenting, okay? You get to age 70 without a functioning heart when it comes to us. So what I'm saying is a practicing cardiologist who is not only an interventionalist, he's also a, a clinician and follows patients like Neil, uh, what's your take on what I'm saying? Well, I don't think, you know, it's interesting to listen to the discussion where we're trying to make categorical uh, conclusions that surgery is better than uh, percutaneous intervention, that stents uh, that are drug eluting are better than uh, bare metal stents, uh, or, or not to mention medical therapy. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, I don't think you can make those categorical statements. I think you, I mean, you, the facts have to be assessed, but when it's all said and done, you apply it to the patient that's in front of you. Uh, and you have to take all the things into consideration. And, and uh, in, you also have to be a little suspect about some of the commentary. So, for example, you know, having more uh, interventions at remote sites with drug eluting stents, I, I don't know that that's a uh, financially driven thing. It may be that we take on more complicated lesions when it's with the drug eluting stents, and we really can't do the second lesion at the same time with, uh, with safety. So there are other reasons for it. And uh, as an example, when you talk about the restenosis rate uh, being just as high, well, there's a difference between restenosis as measured in the studies we have and clinical restenosis. Uh, you know, years ago when we were doing balloons, the clinical restenosis with symptomatic restenosis was at least one half of what the angiographic restenosis would be. Those patients don't need other interventions. Uh, so you have a patient, I think drug eluting stents are far superior. Uh, I think there is, however, a problem, and I think all the uh, interest and activity in the uh, technical field it represents a knowledge that we're not there yet with drug eluting stents. We've got to find out what causes these things and what other subsequent things come to be. I wouldn't necessarily say that, uh, I mean, it's actually pretty well shown that not everybody that has a subacute thrombosis has stopped their antiplatelet therapy. I think that there is a certain degree of, uh, of resistance to aspirin and to uh, uh, plavix. And uh, it's being more and more shown, and I think we need better drugs for this, better tests to determine whether these are the patients or they're not. So when it's all said and done, I am a relatively conservative uh, uh, interventionalist. Uh, just for my own personal uh, bias, I lean toward surgery for uh, bifurcation left mains, even though I've done plenty of them myself and they've come out. I do them when I think surgery is going to be at a, at, at a higher risk. Uh, I think triple vessel disease depends on the nature of the triple vessel disease. If you're going to have 50 millimeters of stent in every artery that, uh, that you're dealing with and uh, 1,000 cc's of contrast every time you, you try to do something, I'm not, I don't think you're doing this patient a favor. Uh, but I think you have to individualize and some of the commentary of what's better are, are, is not uh, this is better and this is no good uh, and shouldn't be used. Everything will have its place and that will evolve as time goes on and technology uh, improves. So, so one last comment. I mean, I agree with all of Neil's comments. I think we, we have to individualize, obviously, for the patient's benefits. I think that what you learn from syntax is it really pushed the border. 
and I think you'll see more of the data. You know, right now we didn't see much of the left main triple vessel data. That's going to all come out of TCT, so we'll understand the details. But it's looking like for the less severe left main patients, the, the drug eluting stents will be fine. But for the really complex the triple vessel disease patients, and when you put in four, five, six stents, then yes, surgery is going to be better. And that's why we do need the surgeons. The last point I want to make, though, to be provocative, to be provocative, though, is you both raised this concept of you take the 55 year old, and by the time they get all their stents and come to surgery, they have higher MACE rates. And the reason that is, is because 90% of those patients never come to surgery. The 10% that do are the worst of the worst patients, and they're the ones that are having the higher MACE rates. This is why we need the surgeons. Thank you.